While you're clapping your hands, why don't you just open your mouth and just give him a praise? Come on, you can give him a praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I honor him because he is so good and so real. I like to give honor to God to one of the most respected men in this country in Christendom and his wife. If you can please put your hands together for Bishop Morton and his wife. To Bishop Ellis and Sister Patrice and all of the bishops and the pastors and the elders, the evangelists in the building tonight. I'm so honored of the Lord for all that he has done to Bishop McClendon is so good to see you. Amen. Before I minister tonight, just a little song that's been in my spirit. Go to A flat. Thank you, Jesus. That's where I am strong in your presence. Oh Lord, my God, in your presence, that's where I belong. Seeking your face. 
Lift your hands up and just worship him for a minute. Just lift your hands up and begin to worship him for a minute. Just for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is one of the most awesome gifts we can have in our lives. It is there that we are made strong and survive. If you get your Bibles, if you would, I've been running with the word and Bishop said something to me earlier just for a few seconds upstairs and I it only confirmed what the Lord was saying thank you and it brought such a confirmation and I know that there are some very powerful people that are lined up and there will be a tremendous outpouring of God's Spirit and I feel it in the building already and so the word that I am running with it is I must admit something that is very <clears throat> challenging and difficult because it is full of truth when you look at and as a prophet of God and whatever people want to call it just I just say somebody that just spends a little bit more time in prayer I had to come to grips with the fact that I am technically not permitted to minister unless I know without a shadow of a doubt that God has given me a word and so, when I know that, and I do know that, I think a long time ago I kind of got myself out of the habit, and sometimes in Christendom it can become a bad habit, and it's a habit that says that we must get a response from people in order to confirm that God is speaking. But when you know that God is speaking, I already brought an amen with me. It's in my spirit already. The Holy Ghost is already telling me amen. When I look around the body of Christ in my prayer time, and I have several places that I pray, and one of the places that I pray when I am praying for the nation or praying for world events, uh, is the threshing floor in Waycross, Georgia, and that is a place that the Lord really doesn't permit me a lot. And I can count the times on maybe one hand minus some fingers that I've gone to that place. And he has permitted me to bring my personal issues to that floor. And so when I step on that floor, man of God, I'm just, I'm, I'm stepping on that floor with a divine purpose 
for the nation and really trying to understand where we are. And so when you start talking about gatherings like this and we have come together and God has given it to this man of God to bring this gathering together, then we have to put ourselves in a position that we begin to uh, look around and understand what is the purpose, the real, the real purpose that we gather. And so we look around at church and um, I'm, I'm searching myself and, and, and looking around at church at large. And that's how I have to see it sometimes and just watching the church at large and watching where the church is going at large. And so as I begin to speculate and seek the Lord, we are growing in numbers and increasing in numbers. But after a while, I'm noticing that we have another group of people that are in the church. And I'm going to talk about two different groups of people tonight. We have another group of people that are in the church. And, 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 and all of this time that we've been spending, because I've been raised in the church all of my life, in the church of God in Christ, all of my life. And, and, and so we've, we've gone through the phases of, you know, the, the, the prophecies and, 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 and God's going to do it. And, and, and I think we're coming to a place now in the body of Christ that people... People are ready to see the prophecy fulfilled. Now, maybe I'm not preaching to everybody tonight, but we'll but we'll get to you. But but how long are we going to do it this way to the point that when you look at it, it's almost becoming monotonous, where everybody is kind of doing the same thing. Amen. My own self. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing. And so the, our churches are looking alike. Our churches are sounding alike. And you know, and it's the and it's the choir. And, and, and then it's the praise team. And then and then it's the announcements. And, 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 and then it's the preacher. And then every week we come back to church and we're doing the same thing. And thank you for an amen, sister. You may be the only one. But see, there's coming something called people are now started, and you can feel the boredom in the kingdom of God because we can only shout for so long and we can only speak in tongues for so long and we can only run around the church for so long and we can only cover up each other for so long and I don't care if you don't say amen but if you heard one message okay cause see a lot of what I'm saying right now you've even heard this before thank you Jesus and so now we are becoming high on each other. And so now it becomes who's the greatest in the kingdom and who's got the spot in the kingdom and who's the next big hit in the kingdom. And now we're turning the church into a circle and we're not really accomplishing what God has called us to accomplish. This is going to be harder than I thought. This is going to be harder than I thought. This is going to be harder than I thought. And, 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 see, and see, the reason why, Pastor Sapp, I have to talk like this is because the same people that we've been preaching to saying, oh, hold on and do it and God going to fix it and get yourself together. Now, there's been a switch and the people that's in the pews that got themselves together and the people in the pulpit is playing games. And so now, you can't keep telling people about being saved. We for the people of God because everybody ain't fornicating oh. everybody ain't cheating everybody ain't lying there are some people that are in this building that have made up in their mind that they're going all the way with God and we cannot keep coming to the body of Christ preaching baby messages and babysitting the people of God if you don't want God get out of the church but the church I'm preaching too hard already. I'm preaching. I'm preaching too hard already. I'm preaching too hard already. Because we ain't going nowhere. We're getting bigger, but we ain't going nowhere. Good God have mercy. We got 10,000 and now, and now we brag about how many people we got. Oh, I got 15,000. I got 20,000. I got 7,000. But we're not moving. We're collecting bodies in the seats. And now, oh my God, slavery has now hit the church. So, see, I know 
y'all got a time frame on the building, so I'm gonna hurry up. I'm gonna hurry up. I'm gonna hurry up and say this. I'm gonna hurry up and say this. And so now we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not really giving, we're not really giving knowledge and we're not, and we're not really giving educational information. What we're doing is teaching people how to fly in the spirit. Oh, the spirit did it. Oh, I'm waiting on God. Oh, the Lord are doing. Oh, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor in three days I'm coming out. Well, let me tell you something. You're not coming out because the church is trying to hide behind spirituality when God is saying, I've given you power. Now you got to get something can I really ask you something can I ask you something why is our greatest accomplishment building the church okay I'm not I'm, see, I'm gonna come on this side because they ain't gonna get none over there what is our greatest accomplishment building a church and a new church building when the Bible says that the final mantle for the kingdom of God is to go into all the world I'm not gonna hear y'all preach back to me but it's okay was a catastrophe. No, that wasn't a catastrophe. That was God saying, it's time to go. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me right there. The tsunami was God saying, it's time to go. Because you know what? We're in church and we're raising offerings and we're building bigger buildings, but we're not servicing the people of God. We're not servicing the kingdom of God. We're not making it happen. We're in tongues. We're not in power. <laughs> The Holy Ghost, I spoke in tongues and I got knocked out on the power of God and the Holy Ghost came in and, 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 I, and I, I had an experience that I ain't never had before. Well, the Bible tells me in the book of Acts, Bishop, the Bible tells me in the book of Acts, oh, Rabbi Shaya, that, that, that when they were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost fell, it said they began to speak in tongues and, and, and people thought they were drunk. But the part that got me when I was in prayer the other day, he said, but when the skilled, skilled, intelligent men heard them speaking, Bishop, they said, wait a minute, these people ain't drunk. These people are speaking our language. Now, let me, let me paraphrase that. Black folk start speaking Chinese and they never been to China. Okay, I'm going to help you with that right there. Black folk start speaking Russian. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So that said something to me about the Holy Ghost. The real Holy Ghost will cause you to tap into another man's culture. The Holy Ghost is not a black church. The Holy Ghost is not a white church. When the church gets the Holy Ghost, it'll cause you to do stuff that you ain't never done in your life. It'll speak wisdom to you that you never heard before. I'm not here, no. I'm not here, nobody. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me speaking in tongues with a storefront church. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me speaking in tongues, but the church don't own nothing. Speaking in tongues, but we ain't got no Fortune 500 companies. Speaking it, oh y'all, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. Lord, I gotta sit down because I got. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere right now. Oh, Jesus. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. We ain't gonna get away with it like that. Cause the mouth been too big about the world need to be saved. The world ain't stutting us. And the world ain't stutting us because we have a whole lot of church, but we ain't got nothing. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing you. Listen, listen, listen. You ain't getting ready to bring nobody from the secular world to Jesus because the church is too broke. And the reason why is because we in here trying to get rich off of each other. But the world is not. the 
today because I'm tired of being a slave. I'm tired of preaching for an offering. No, I told Bishop tonight, I don't want your offering. I want my destiny. I want my purpose. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't hear y'all talk to me. You think the church is the end of the line, but it's the process. This white dress is my process. This is not my destiny. Oh God, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. No, sit down, because I got to do this. Sit down, because I got to do this. Sit down, because I got to do this. Got people prophesying to you, talking about everybody that give it in seven days is coming in the mail. Well, I came to make an announcement with the mail done stopped. Because my Bible tells me that the favor of God, it says if you get wisdom, you will get the favor of God. And I don't care how many people you got left, Write it in your Bible. You do not have favor on your life unless you have wisdom. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because the Bible says she's crying in the streets. The Bible said wisdom is in the intersection. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. The Bible said if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. Oh, see, that's why favor ain't here yet. Because favor can't come down. It is illegal for favor to rest on you unless it sees a wisdom. For Proverbs, the 8th chapter says this. It says, oh, when God stepped out in the power of his spirit and he got ready to create the world, the Bible said our wisdom was there. He said before The church, we have, come on now, let's stop lying, let's stop lying, let's stop lying. We have the power of the creator on the inside of us and we can't create nothing. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. But now the church ought to be its own infrastructure. Who am I talking to right there? We, oh, y'all, come on here, somebody. But we all fighting for a front row. We all fighting for a title. We all trying to get to the pulpit. Well, who going to be the next big preacher? Who going to be the nobody? Because God is about to destroy this whole thing. He's about to tear it down. It ain't no more stars in the kingdom. It's time for the body of Christ to get up out of your seat and get about your destiny. Building the church is your pastor's vision, not yours. We're talking about the presence of the Lord. We ain't got no presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. And so all of these years we spend time on the altar. We've been cleaning for 20 years. Ain't nobody clean yet. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I don't hear you saying nothing. Because you tell me, oh, we in the presence of the Lord. I'm in the prayer. And we sway and sing in the praise and worship. And we in the presence of the Lord. Galatians says the presence of the Lord. He said there is some things that the presence of the Lord within accomplishes. It accomplishes love, purification, sanctification. And that's what you don't pray for. I'm not hearing y'all talk that to me. So the next time you throw your hands up lying in church. And what you got can't make you live right. I don't have to pray. Oh, y'all. That God keep me holy. It can't. You don't, you don't buy a car and then they send you the steering wheel two months later. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And so we preach a weak gospel because we ain't hardly got nobody living right. Lord have mercy, Jesus. And so the church has spent all of her time cleaning up the church. Y'all live right. Y'all get saved. Y'all live right. Put that down. Don't touch that. I'm, listen, I got a new statement for you. Touch it if you want to. Go ahead and do it because I'm headed to destiny. I'm tired of sitting in church, not accomplishing nothing. How long we going to shout? How long we going to speak in tongues? How long we going to sing our favorite song? And where are we going? Okay. Nobody talk to me. 
nobody gonna shout now. Ain't nobody gonna shout. Everybody gonna look at me. Everybody gonna look at me. Everybody gonna look at me, Pastor. Cause you know what? The day for the Doc Syndrome and the day for what's up, man? That day is over. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I said, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because the world is dying. I said, the world is dying. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Somebody done told us, somebody done told us, and I know it, and I got all my scriptures up there, and I want to go back up there, and I want to get all my scriptures, but you know what, I'm almost done, because this is the prophetic word, I can't, I can't, I can't go there, but I'm going to tell you what, you already got a church, you better start building schools, you better start building hospitals, you better start, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me, you're, 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 listen, you're building drive, listen, we already got enough churches, we don't have enough buildings, we don't have enough executive buildings, we I just say nothing. I ain't nobody talking to me. Because you got visions. You got dreams. And you don't even know how to work it. And you don't know how to work it because you know what? We got to go to the world. And that's the world for wisdom. Because people in the church, they are not here. Nobody talk back to me. I'm not here. Nobody talk back to me. I'm not here. Nobody. Just like we have Bible study. We ought to have one night a week where we get financial direction. And it's mandatory that every member show up to get your finances in order. Who am I talking about? We ought to be concerned about the person and they welfare. That's why the church don't represent Christ. We don't pay our bills. We are late. Oh God. We, don't, we get our lights turned off. We get our gas turned off. We get our telephones turned off. And the biggest testimony you got is God caught me up on my rent. That wasn't a miracle. Nobody is telling us that it's not okay to bounce a check. Nobody is telling us that it's not okay to be late on your rent. And we got people giving in the offerings and telling them to give by faith. And their integrity and their credit is shot. If I were to do a survey in this building, I guarantee you that 75% of this building don't even have a 500 credit score. You ain't even bother to look at it. But yet you talk See, I ain't getting nobody to really say nothing. And then we get high. And this is our high. Oh, you know who came to my church today? Oh, you know who came to my church today? Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so that played for the Buccaneers came to my church. Oh, you know who came to my church today? Oh, you know who, who came to my church today? Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so who's a movie star. They came, but they didn't stay. Okay, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I said, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Because for somewhere, we've got, oh, okay, let me just, let me just, no, 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 I got to do this. 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 Because I got to break that. I got that. I got to break that hole. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you, syndrome. And the devil is a liar. And it's the enemy. I have to kill him nationwide. Mm -hmm. See, see the Bible said in the book of Psalms 41, 11, 12 It says, he has upheld me in my integrity And set me over in his presence forever And so when I start looking up the word integrity It says, sound 
strongest, the firm adherence to a code or a standard of values, the quality of being undivided. Okay, no, no, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So then, so then, so then, so then, if he says, he has upheld me, when I look at the word upheld, I know my, my nose is real crazy, when nobody never steal my messages, because they wouldn't even understand my nose. He upheld me, it says, to support or defend as against opposition or criticism, to keep up or to keep me from sinking. So, 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 so then, if I give you a code, and I said this is the way of righteousness, that ain't no God help me be righteous, that's you making a decision to keep the code. Now, if you keep the code, then it makes God responsible to keep you from falling. Oh. See, what I just did is hit every backsliding devil right there. Every, every devil that said, I, oops, I slipped again. Oops, I made a mistake. No, the Bible said that, that, that sin don't start with an oops, baby. It starts with a thought. And when the thought is conceived and you let it stay there to mature, it turns into sin. Who am I preaching to right there? See, when the Bible said in all of that getting, get understanding, get wisdom, it said with understanding, I come out of sin. So now I know that we jumping and shouting, but we don't understand. We don't understand that uh, this ain't a feeling. No, I found that out. I found that out, Bishop. I, I found that out. And I'm, I'm, finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna hurt somebody's feelings right here. I, I felt it. Ooh, the power of God just fell on me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The reason why I know that it ain't a feeling because everybody feeling it. Everybody feeling it. Sinners are feeling it. We let people come to our churches and they not say, and they walk out and tell us, I enjoyed your service. That's not a compliment. What they're saying is, there wasn't enough power to hit my belly to change me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It's not, it's not a, it's not a feeling. And I gotta be the one to tell you. And we made you believe that you gotta feel saved and feel God and feel the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is a responsibility, watch this, it's a responsibility to tap another ram. And if you haven't done anything supernatural since you got baptized, you ain't got it. I'm not gonna bite my tongue about that. Now see, I'm not getting no, I'll walk all over this building. I'm not, listen, I don't care if you don't say amen. I'm gonna tell you one more time because what I'm sick of is people say, I can't make it and you don't know what I'm going through and you don't know what I'm going through and you don't know, you know what it's time to shut up and come on through. If you're going through, come on through because you're the one said you got the Holy Ghost. You're the one told people you got power and you can't make a headache leave. Who am I preaching to? You ain't gotta say amen. I'm coming all the way back here. If you got the Holy Ghost, produce something. If you got the Holy Ghost, make the devil behave. If you got the Holy Ghost, stop sinning. If you got the Holy Ghost, live right. Pay your bills on time. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Glory, hallelujah. I said, glory, hallelujah. I said, glory, hallelujah. I said, glory, hallelujah. When Jesus started his ministry, he took people with him. He took the tax collector with him. He picked people that were doing something in the kingdom. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. We say, I'm going through so much. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm. I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm out there a little bit. I'm out there a little bit. I know I'm out there, y'all. I, I, I know I'm out there. Ooh, wisdom. I gotta read something to you. What, what, uh, what, what wisdom is? I don't want you confused about what it is. See, I write my notes in prayer. That's why they all mixed up. I, I gotta just find it. When he give it to me and just write it like that. Okay. Wisdom. 
It says here, wisdom. wisdom. I got wisdom. I got wisdom. No, no. Wisdom. Wisdom is the correct application. You got to apply this. It is the correct application that is given to judge, discern, and plan a course. And we speak in tongues. But what is our course? Okay, I, I, you know, I'm saying something right here. And, 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 and people act like I'm not saying nothing. What is the plan? <laughs> what is your plan? How do you plan to go into all the world? Because you done already did the church thing. And you good at it. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Because let me just give y'all a compliment. Let me give y'all a compliment. Come on, full gospel. Let me give you a compliment. Now, one thing y'all got going on, I got to give it to you. Y'all know how to put up some churches. Y'all can say we passed in today, 20 days later. Y'all got that whole thing figured out. Okay, we perfected that. But have you given the congregation the plan as to how we go leave the church? Because we ain't never supposed to stay in the church. Oh, God. Okay, let me come over here because I'm not here. No can't get nobody to say nothing come on we got to do something build a skating ring do something build a bowling alley do something you got to make the gospel now relevant people don't want to hear it from between the pews you got to go into all the world and go to where the people are I'm not hearing y'all talk to me somebody talk to me somebody talk to me oh see I can't cause see now we get ready to separate religious people from spiritual people because the bible said that wisdom in proverbs 4 and 1 and 2 it causes you to be able to discern comprehend uh, 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 perceive spiritual matters spiritual matters spiritual matters can i bring that to you huh Huh. If, 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 if Jay-Z uh, like to play football, uh, you ain't got to come to my church because Sunday I'm going to let an associate preach and you going to sit in the bleachers with Jay-Z. Oh, y'all, we don't know how to reach nobody. I, I'm not. There's the church. Now, I didn't hear nothing there. I, I didn't hear nothing. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not hearing nobody talk Bishop, please help me. Please help me. Pastor McClendon, you are skilled. You are schooled. Please help me. If I'm, if I'm, Bishop, if I'm preaching something wrong. And so, and so we caught, we caught in our own trap. We caught in our own choir. You know why? Because we scared. Scared is going to jump on us. We scared. But I'm going to tell you how Jesus started one of the biggest revivals that he had ever seen. He went to the well and talked to a hooker. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And when he got the hooker saying, church not at the revival at the well he went to meet her where her meeting place was and then the hooker said and then the hood of the bush then the hooker said then the prostitute said I met a man that told me everything that I've done and I'm prophesying to us in here because y'all gonna have to go to some movie stars houses and you better get unstuck from your church you're gonna have to go to some football games some minutes or somebody I'm not hearing y'all talk back to here it's time for us to transfer power to raise up sons and daughters stop trying to be a king in your own camp get you some sons and some daughters and pour something in them I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me you're not I want you to look at some, and I ain't gonna be scared to say this. 
because it's a compliment. Look at John Hagee. Where's his son? With an office right next door to his. Being trained. See, we got this scared mentality that ain't nobody gonna get in my position till I die. You ought to be big enough in what God has called you to do. You know what? I done already done this. I done finished my course. Come on, son. Let me train you how to run this church because now I gotta do something else. There's another calling that God has for me. Who am I preaching to? I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. Somebody better say something to me right there. That is the reason why Joel Osteen is where he is because he had a daddy that wasn't afraid of his own. That's why we try to put our thumb on people in our churches when we see they got something. I ain't hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We're the only ones that don't reproduce. I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. We elevate our friends. Bishop, that's why I love you. That's why I love you because you're spiritual. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. See, right now it's not about years. It's not about how long I've known you. It's about what do you have in your belly to offer. It's about what is the call of God on your life. Come on here, somebody. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I just wish I had somebody to say something to me. And sometimes we feel like our season has come and gone. But your season ain't gone. Your season ain't gone. Your season ain't gone. It's shifted. It's shifted to another place. And sometimes we can allow the body of Christ to intimidate us. Because you know what? We do this to each other. You ain't But you know what God spoke to me? You know what he spoke to me and said to me in prayer? Four years ago he said, If you lose your desire for the religious church, I'll give you the kingdom. And the kingdom ain't got but one boss. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. The kingdom opened doors that no man can shut. kingdom your season never ends because you're walking in the spirit because you learn how to hear the spirit of the Lord and you switch when God says switch you turn when God said turn if God is saying praise and worship and if he's telling you for your church for the next six months I don't want you to do nothing but worship and you read a scripture break tradition I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because you know what the Bible said we see Where's everybody? Where's everybody? I'm, 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 I'm finished. And so we compete. And then we feel less when we don't have what somebody else has. And we give ourselves strokes and heart attacks. Trying to keep up. But I'd rather have a storefront and know that I'm in the will of God. Than to build something God ain't told me to build. Because maybe some of your preachers, your job ain't to build a church but to build a hospital. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. I wish I had somebody. God, I wish I had somebody to talk to me. But it says when wisdom comes, favor. You got a prophecy? I said, do anybody in here, have you ever got a prophecy? Raise your hand if you've ever gotten a prophecy. Let me, let me, let me, let me look. Let me get up here so I can look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost the whole room. Now let me tell you why 90% of this room it ain't came to pass. 
And I'm going to use a simple illustration. God prophesied to me and told me he was going to give me a pizza shop and I've been dreaming. I had, I had two dreams and, and Sister Catalog, she came and she prophesied and she confirmed that God was going to give me a pizza shop. You know how? You know how your vision going to come to pass? On the internet! Ain't nobody said nothing. Because they want me to say, and God going to blow in here. And I'm going to raise my hands and the power of God going to fall and the devil going to take his hands off. No! When you find out how to make sauce, how to make dough, how much flour it takes, how much it costs to get in the building, how many workers you need, how many boxes you need, how many cups, do I need pepper, how much cheese, then favor is going to come. You don't know what that for it to come to pass. The spirit and the miraculous is God. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And I'm going to give you this one last example and I'm going. I'm going. David was so spiritual. <laughs> David was spiritual. Honey, he got threshing floors and he cried out to God. Ooh, he just loved the Lord. God found him worshiping. Ooh. Told him about the temple and all that. But when God got ready to build it, he used somebody that asked for wisdom. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Now I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know this is, this is, this, this, this ain't gonna go down well. Uh-huh. But what did David say? David said, Solomon, let me tell you something. And don't you turn away from what I said. You get wisdom and you get understanding. And don't you turn away from my words. And right after that, the Bible said, and then God starts showing Solomon that David had a plan. But there was something wrong with it. It didn't have enough water tanks. It didn't have enough cisterns. The foundation wasn't big enough. So if David had a building the way he saw it, uh, he was spiritual. But he didn't have enough wisdom. Oh, God, I wish I had somebody to talk to me. You want to build something? But you don't know enough And this is not the decade of God gonna do it This is the decade of God's gonna give it to the person that searches it out Okay I'm, re I'm really I'm really I'm really trying to help you understand What What he's trying to say here Bishop told me to, See, it says here that uh, wisdom is God's word and life's experience. That's why we can't get nothing done because we, we, we be punks. Oh, I'm going through. So you don't come to church for 2,000 years. I'm just going through. I'm just, no, you know what? Let me tell y'all something. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what God showed me? He showed me this bishop and this gonna bless you. He said, he said that my destiny in you, Juanita Bynum is like the navigation system in your car. When I get in my car and I program an address in my car and I tell it and I give it to address, I can be in my car and when I start driving, I can be crying, but that lady gonna say, keep going two blocks to the left. She don't care that I'm crying. She ain't stopping giving me direction because I'm in tears. That lady ain't stopping because I'm wailing out to God. That lady ain't saying, listen, she don't stop telling me where I'm going. She said in two more miles, prepare to turn left in three more exits. And I can be speaking in tongues. I can be saying I can't make it, but the navigational system keeps talking. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why I know we ain't got no word from God. Because when you get a word from God, you can be going through the fire, but the spiritual navigation will keep saying, they lying, but keep going. They talking about you, but keep going. You are almost there. Bam! You're at destiny. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You know why I'm preaching like this? Because I feel like there's somebody in here that's going through the fire. But you better tell the devil I changed my mind. I'm going through the fire, but I'm going after my destiny at the same time. I wish I had somebody to start shouting in here. I'm 
God bless you. See, you said something that sent my spirit somewhere, and I almost lost it in this chair before I got up. You said, we're headed to another dimension. Okay. Love that song. See, everybody want to go to levels. Let me tell you what's wrong with you. We got too many planes in here. Oh, yeah. We got too many planes. We got too many planes in here. You know, we got too many airplanes in here. You got too many people that's on the runway waiting to take off. Oh, we got too many people that's waiting for another man in the control tower to tell you you number 20 in line. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference between, see, a plane can go to another city, uh, but it can't go to another dimension. Well, y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't saying, when it caps off at 36,000 feet, it got to stop. Because you know why the pressure is too high. But see, I'm not talking to everybody in here because everybody don't get this. But somebody got this because this is me and y'all. But see, there's another system that they're using that just came on the news. It's called a rocket. And see, the rocket has one thing it needs to do. Stay with his head pointed up and stay in position. And what happens is, you got to wait until you get enough fire underneath the rocket. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Because see, you say you're going through the fire. Let me tell you why you're going through the fire. Because God is about to shoot somebody to another dimension. A rocket don't go to another city. It go to another realm. It go to another level. It's somewhere out in the hemisphere. It goes on. Who am I talking to right there? Who am I talking to right there? It goes where no man has gone before. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do something that ain't never happened before. Stop the music for a second. I'm going to say that one more time. There's some people in here been going through hell. But I'm going to tell you what I want you to do right now. You better start doing like them people in that rocket ship. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They're not worried about whether or not they're going to get there. Because they got enough fire. Lord have mercy. So whatever you're doing tonight, whatever your visions are, whatever your dreams are, and you've been to hell and back, baby, that's your guarantee that it's about to happen for you. That's why you ought to start shouting right now. That's why you ought to start praising God. You don't need no music to do that. Where is the church? See, listen to y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Listen to y'all. Listen to y'all. Listen to y'all. Now I gotta, I gotta talk about you. Cause see, I didn't ask you for no Baptist praise. Cause you don't know what God is about to do. The very fact that I walked in this building tonight, saying there's a switch that's gonna happen. Oh God, I wish I had somebody to, I wish I had somebody to believe that. I'm walking this building for somebody. And I don't care what the devil intended. I said it's not only your time, but it's your turn. And you better start praising God like you believe it. Who am I preaching to right there? You better open up your mouth and give God a praise. See, we ain't ready to shift. We ain't ready to shift. I'm going to tell you why we ain't ready to shift. I'm going to tell you why the people don't know how to praise God. Because the bishops don't know how to praise God. And the elders don't know how to praise God. And ain't nobody talk to people how to praise God. Who am I preaching to? This ain't about no title. This is about destiny. I said praise God. Let me let you get an understanding right here. What am I praising God for? Watch this. What am I praising God for? Uh. Uh. Where's Jerry? Get my video ready. You got it ready. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Because I can't tell you what I'm talking about. I can't, maybe I can't express all of it. So I just want you to watch this video. 
All right. Jesus. Because I'm telling y'all right now. We getting ready to go, y'all. Now, now you can stay there. Or you can go with me. But I'm going. Okay, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. What we gonna do? Keep on preaching in each other's conferences? What we gonna do? Keep on having all the famous people? When there's some people out here that can preach circles around me? No, it's time for a changing of the guards. That's why let me tell you something. When I said I was doing women on the front line, leave her alone. Leave that woman alone. That woman getting free. She breaking out of religion. Because some of y'all got a little praise. Hallelujah. Let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. Let me tell you something right here. I got to show you something. I got to show you something. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I'm doing women on the front line. Because the Lord said it was accessing the power within. And I was planning. He started saying, no, I want financial directors. Man. I want creditors to be there. I want people to be there to teach people about how to organize them, how to start a business, all of that. That's what I want for women. He said, I want you to mix the spirituality with the intelligence. And I said, okay, God. And then he spoke something to me, Bishop, that blew my mind. It blew my mind. He said, well, where's Tanya Hall? Come here. Come out here. He said, now this woman has been with you for 10 years. 10 years plus. 10 years plus she's been with you and she's been working your ministry she's been talking to pastors she's been doing all the work she's been organizing conferences she's been doing all of this and I said okay God and he spoke this to me Bishop he said this year I don't want you to get stuck in the stardom of ministry I want you to give her the women on the front line conference I want you to hand it to her as a gift and tell her now take it further you don't hear what I'm saying And the last day of the conference, it'll be called the prophetic transfer. And you will give her the mantle for this conference. And you will now become her guest speaker. Because she, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, y'all, I can't get nobody to talk to me right there. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Okay, I got to show you why. Come on. You ready? You ready? Turn it up. In every generation, God raises up a revolutionary, a chief commander, a voice who's not afraid to cry loud and spare none on behalf of his people. We call her the prophetess to the nations, whose very presence invokes a tangible anointing that fills stadiums and changes lives. With transparency and brokenness, she ushers people into the presence and glory of God. Prophetess Juanita Bynum is an awesome teacher who delivers God's word in season with boldness, freshness, and authority. Juanita Bynum Ministries is world-renowned and has been marked with signs and wonders since its inception. From no more sheets to the threshing floor, the power of God has been unquestionable in Juanita Bynum's life and ministry. She's a best-selling author with over one and a half million copies sold nationwide. A popular television personality whose appearances causes ratings to A humanitarian made ambassador with multiple missions projects all over the world. A national recording artist who was certified gold in less than 52 days. And to date is 22,000 units from going platinum. An executive producer, playwright, and powerful actress. Juanita Bynum is also a businesswoman, serving as CEO of Flow Publishing, Flow Records, Juanita Bynum Enterprises, Juanita Bynum Entertainment, which features the production A Night of Passion, upcoming movies, No More Sheets, and I Know I've Been Changed, based upon the number one essence best-selling book. 
though she has crossed denominational lines, is respected as a spiritual leader in this generation and is one of the most admired African-American women of today. Still, the totality of Juanita Bynum has yet to be revealed. Juanita Bynum Enterprises will expand to yet another plateau with the Juanita Bynum Show with 200 seats for a live television audience. JBE Online Radio, JBE Life On Demand Reality Show, the release of Anthony Magazine, the grand opening of the Country Spa, and the launcher of the Mount Olive Line, Mount Olive Candle Line, Mount Olive Tea Line, and the FMA Makeup Line. And coming this fall, August 8th through the 11th, Dr. Bynum has invited you to come and be a part of the fresh and all new Women on the Frontline Reunion Conference. Featuring the theme, Accessing the Power Within. Come and be blessed. I'm not staying in the church. I'm not staying in the four walls. There are people in this building, preachers, pastors, that have multi-million dollar ideas that has nothing to do with preaching. And you have sat on your dreams. And the devil has made us feel that we can either have one or the other when the power of God gives us permission to have both. The true Holy Ghost causes us to possess power in both worlds. Build it. You have designers in here. You have people in this building that know how to do hair and won't take your business to the next level. I just, I'm just full. Because we are behind schedule. And the same money is circulating. And we got it down pat that in the summertime the offerings go low. Christmas time the offerings get scarce. That's not our wealth. Three prophetic moves. One, the prophet comes to the woman that has money and she builds him a room. She had money, but what she needed was spiritual. And so he prophesies and she gives birth. The second prophetic move. The prophet comes to the woman and asks her for meal. She gives it to him and she never runs out. But where is the church? The church is sitting in the belly of the spirit of the third prophetic move. It is the prophet that comes to the woman and the woman says, I have no money. Help me to pay my bills. And he doesn't blow on her and he doesn't speak in tongues and he doesn't lay hands on her and he doesn't cast a mantle She's not slain in the spirit He says what do you have in your house for sale? What has God given you in your spirit that you can sell it? Where is the church? I don't hear nobody
somebody say it ain't man and that's scaring me that's scaring me I want somebody to say something right there <laughs> it's in you the car business it's in you what was the idea that he gave you it's time to pull it out put it on paper sell it the church has got to come out of the rut we got to be set free nobody wants to talk to a failure when the football game is over, the cameras don't chase the losing team to the locker room. I'm finished. And we sitting around saying God gonna make a way. Woman of God, you're so talented. All the dreams and the visions got nothing to do with church stuff that's in you. Businesses. I feel it. I see it. I hear it. Yo, I, I, can, can, I, can, can I just get... All I need is three people to say... Oh, pastor's wife sitting at home complaining. My husband, he ain't never at home. He always at the church. Well, what are you doing? You got gifts. You got talents. Use them. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Churches can start businesses together. We are you. your hand. No, but you satisfied working nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, like a slave. And you got the power to change that. No, the world ain't prejudiced. You're not educated enough. Stop talking about what white people won't give you. I'm black as you. Who has stopped me? Taking every dime you got and going to the mall. Spending every dime you got on earrings and jewelry and purses and necklaces. And let me help you with something that's going on your sale. But you better not miss your destiny because God's got me in this building tonight preaching like this across the nation. Because the world is in a season and the church is in a season. And you better tap that season. It's going to always be a plows on sale to seduce you out of the will of God. But it's time for the church. Where is your savings bonds? Some of y'all don't even know how to read the stock market. Give me my checkbook. Give me my checkbook right there. Write me a check for $5,000. Now let me give you a prophetic word. Check ain't in the mail, it ain't coming. You know, I was praising God the other day and I came to the conference and didn't know how I was going to get in my room and somebody just walked up to me and blessed me. Anytime anybody have to bless you with the basics, it is a sign to you that your life is out of order. And the spirit of the Lord deals with order. Even when he got ready to have Abraham to give, a, give an offering, he said, make a figure eight. Do it the way I tell you to do it. You don't just bring me nothing. Because let me just help you with something. Bishop Ellis, grab your wife and stand up for me, please. Just come out here. If I say to Bishop Ellis, and no disrespect by calling him by his first name, but if I say, Neil Ellis, come to me. Come to me now. He has to leave her. I didn't call her. I called Neil Ellis. If I say Patrice, come to me. Patrice comes to me. But if I say Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, I want the Ellis's to come to me. He can't leave her. She can't leave him. Now, this is the reason why the Spirit of the Lord is not working in your life. Because the wisdom... <sighs> And the spirit never separated. And what we keep trying to do is make God do it in the spirit. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
when it's a trial, they hook together. And it's illegal for the Spirit of God to move without His Word. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. He can't do it because you don't have a Word on it. So when you call on Heaven's help, the Spirit can't just blow down and just start moving. Because it waits on wisdom to tell him how to do it and what to do. Because the 8th chapter said, and wisdom was the master of the work. So now we've diminished ourselves to people that go to church instead of people with power. And that's why they said Christians are losers. Because <laughs> they want the spirit to do it all. Now let me tell you what we're getting ready to do. Because I ain't going to miss no more seasons in my life. That's why I'm working on walking into my wealth. You understand what I'm saying? Bishop, you have me? You got that? Get my seat for $5,000. And what I'm about to do now is legal. It's legal. And I tell you why it's legal. Because when Saul was looking for direction and he ran into Samuel, his person that was with him said, You can't get wisdom from the prophet unless you sow into it. And so you got people all around you. Hello, Katrina. Okay, all right, all right, all right, it's over. Now, you're trying to go somewhere. And, and, and people, people don't follow people because they like them. They follow them because there's something in them that they need on their life. And the reason why, to this point, you have not been able to dispatch them the way it needs to be. Because you have to sow into that wisdom. Because the Bible says that when you get wisdom, you obtain favor. See, I didn't come for no offering. That's what I said to Bishop. I said, God spoke a word to me in prayer. A month ago. And he said, when you get to full gospel, I'm going to transfer spiritual power. See, I want something from you. And see, we live in a decade now where people don't understand spiritual fathers and spiritual authority and how it's poured out. And so we just take people for granted. Oh, Bishop Morton, he can really sing. Oh, Bishop Morton, he really came through Katrina. Oh, Bishop Morton, he really powerful. Oh, they have the, mm, they, don't, they, they, don't, they don't get the fact that your kind of wisdom and your kind of wisdom is not going to be with us a long time. Look around you. It ain't a whole lot of uh, mothers and, and bishops that are, that are sober, that, that, that's, that, that's able to give us wisdom. That's why it looks like the church is raising themselves and we act like a bunch of bastards. You know why? Because the fathers are going on. Wake up! We the church mothers now. I'm not hearing y'all talk. We the church. You the spiritual father. But I'm only 30 something. You better get a grip and see what the world is doing. Listen, listen, listen. Girls are having babies at 15. The God don't have time for the church mothers to be 60. We gotta be church mothers now. So we don't want the responsibility because we just want to just get up in the pulpit and preach. We don't want to govern people's lives. We don't want to put a responsibility on them and make them respect what's on us to the point that let me tell you something. Don't let this pass you by because when I'm pouring into you, it'll never come around again. You in a season and if you want to miss your season, get out of the way. Who am I talking to? Bishop, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Do not take this conference for granted. Not this year. Because there's a shift in the spirit.